tweet to, like when my live uh, stream goes live and you tweet it out to your followers and the, maybe one percent of those will or less will actually pop the stream. If, even if one person comes from there and starts watching the stream, it's always good. So yeah, follow me on Twitter. <laughs> also on YouTube and Steam Group and here as well on Twitch and Steam Curator and everywhere. Also subscribe to the pa Patreon and uh, donate money through the PayPal and go go buy games on Grimma Gaming. Can I sell out more? Uh, what else do we have? <laughs> do I still have the Amazon link there? I think I took them down. Anyways. <laughs> sell out! <laughs> yes, exactly. I mean, but if I want to do this uh, full time properly as a work or whatever someday. You kind of need, do need to sell out, uh, at least some. I mean, hard to get money if you don't sell out. In in, in some way, at least. You need a uh, you need followers and viewers and subscribers and all kinds of stuff. Better sell out than Eloheim. <laughs> and then there are often contests, giveaways to enter via Twitter. Yeah. There, there's a lot of those. I've taken part in a few of those as well. But usually I don't I don't care that much. I mean, like for example, him, uh, Hal Danskin, he's, uh, he does this uh, for a living and has a family to support, so you need to somehow get the money to survive, so you need to sell out somehow. If your uh, community is not already supportive enough in other ways. Like subscribing enough on your channel and all that. Need to earn that money somehow. Especially if you have a little kid or family. Yeah, I, I've stopped uh, watching a few people with that as well. Uh, Flame Eraser. When when the stream uh, turns into just uh, this announcement, things for thanks for donation, thanks for following, and all the all that, and stops being about the gameplay and the community and talking fun stuff with you guys, and it's just a constant. Well, of course you want to thank the people who subscribe, but you don't you don't need to make that huge fanfare about it all the time. It's just a. I, I, I cannot watch that stuff like that either. All these fla fancy overlays and everything, it's not just. not fun to watch anymore. I, I've definitely stopped watching a few people who have done that. Please don't be like that if you get partnered. Don't worry, I won't help them. Skin. Also, I'm not getting partner, so no worries. But how else will people feel like they're a streamer's friend? <laughs> or that they're part of the community? Isn't the small patch next to your name enough? Did you done? <laughs> also... If the... Streamer uh, actually discusses with the viewers and... Spends time having talks... And addressing you guys directly, instead of just tanking all the donations and all that, the whole stream. I would feel I'm more more friends with that guy that way. And more more part of the community if he actually talks to the guys as well. Like I do. And many other streamers do as well, but I 
actual reading and interaction with chat is all you need. Yeah, I think so as well, Joe. I, I, I really don't like uh, any of these uh, huge overlays and pop-ups and noise notifications and stuff when people have those on. Start taking $2 to respond to questions. That's not that unheard, Jude Evident. Well, not, not exactly directly saying that, but there is definitely uh, streamers where they don't uh, reach out too much and not answer too much. Unless you do a donation and then they read the donation. It's like the only way to get the message through the streamer is to send a donation. Come on, chef. We need uh, more slave material. Also, uh, Jacob is about to die, it seems. That's why I automatically close chat if I watch a stream that has thousand people watching. You just can't interact with that many people, so you don't... Yeah, most of the time you don't. There is, there is some chats with even like 3,000 people and you can still have a discussion. It's, it's also... it's a lot of how you, as a streamer and as a community, run the stream and the chat as well. If it's just a wild west, uh, everyone doing whatever spam and bullshit, then it's totally unreadable. But there is definitely a big chats as well where you can actually have discussions and read. But there are definitely like few in the sea of bullshit. Yeah, exactly how Duskin. There, there is people who do that. <laughs> Stupid chef cannot find the, the way in. Uh, I actually walled this, so there is no longer way through there. So he has to go around the, the whole thing. Conversations were going everywhere, yeah. But there is definitely a, a certain breaking point for the chat. When it always will become too much. And it, it will become too much for the streamer as well. I mean, if you are chatting and uh, watching the stream, you are watching the chat much more than the streamer is. Because he has to focus on the game as well and uh, see that everything is running and all that at the same time. So it, it just becomes uh, too difficult to keep, uh, keep eye on everything. Which probably leads uh, to the fact that uh, you cannot watch what the chat is doing and then you stop uh, interacting as well because you cannot keep up with the discussions. It's not fun to watch and not interact with the streamer. Yeah, I, I think so as well, CRC. Uh, if uh, I was in a situation where I couldn't discuss with you guys, it's pretty much the same as I was doing uh, YouTube videos, but lower quality. Because uh, if I was doing YouTube videos, I could focus every all effort into making that YouTube video. If I wasn't discussing with you guys. The point is to be able to discuss with you guys while streaming. That makes it fun for me as well, and for the viewers. And for viewers, if I wasn't discussing it, discussing with you guys, it would be the same as just watching YouTube videos as well. It's both for the streamer and for a viewer. If there is no that, no interaction, it's better to go watch TV series or YouTube video instead. Yeah, that too, ZRC. But that's uh, also part how you run your community. You need to actively have mods and you yourself uh, stop uh, doing stuff like that. Oh, 
Oops. <laughs> I was only gonna hurt him a bit, but I think that might have been too much. Too much. Well, at least he's dead now. You stopped playing Kerbal because Bell stopped too? Yeah. I need to play some more Kerbal as well. Soon. Soon. I, I will play more Kerbal. <laughs> Not today. Not tomorrow. But we will play more Kerbal. Yes, yeah, Sandam, there is so many games to play. Soon, trademark, yeah. It's the Blizzard soon. I got a message uh, that someone changed their Patreon pledge, but it didn't actually change the number in any way. Strange. You're clearly becoming part of the gaming industry, Bell. <laughs> in what way, Flame Razor? Oh yeah, this soon soon part. Yeah, probably. I mean, I'm I am already a big part of. I'm well, not not sorry, not big. Very very tiny, small fragment of a gaming industry, I, I guess. With the Steam curator thing. <laughs> Doing reviews and stuffs, showing you all the games and making you buy, waste your all your monies on new games. Third biggest? Uh, I'm not third biggest. Uh, tripod. Definitely not third because I'm a uh, twenty seventh biggest. Last time I checked, I'm on the on the third page of curators on Steam. Yep, I'm uh, 30, 28 at the moment. Yeah, it's recommended. Uh, to open. But yeah, I'm uh, 28 out of uh, 34,000 uh, plus curators. So uh, I guess that's doing good. I mean the top person of curators. Only those uh, 34,000 uh, followers on Steam would uh, translate into 34,000 followers on Twitch and uh, YouTube as well. Although they are, uh, they are turning partially into followers in YouTube and. Twitch as well, but not one to one. Sell out. <laughs> it's giving me zero money, seriously, so it's kinda hard to sell out on that. It's the car or uh, something. 
Well, unless, unless you count my YouTube pennies, then it's probably the turning into money, but it, that's not too much. Although it's it's getting better and better, so one day it might be something. Basically, a rover that works as sky crane for itself. Basically. <laughs> I really love the Mako in uh, Mass Effect. They should have done more with that, especially the later game games. Uh, just totally ignore that part. It was really fun. I hope the new uh, new Mass Effect that's coming out has something like that as well. More Makos. Cause it wasn't uh, limited to the Shepard's crew. Other people also had those. It was in the trailer? Okay, so it's probably gonna be a thing as well. Most because you spend major time of it driving. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's true. Flame Racer. It was a cool mechanic, but it was totally not capitalized on properly. It should have been much better. I mean, actually get something worth your time from that. Like the app. Actual part of the gameplay. Imagining if the new Mass Effect was um, like more about exploration and going to planets, strange alien planets with Mako and driving around and doing missions and stuff there, exploring the planets. That would have been actually really, that would be really cool. Cool. Yes, they did. Definitely Flame Razor. And in, in the story as well. <laughs> but for example, uh, doing that uh, planet scanning bullshit in was the Mass Effect 3. Flying around, scan a planet, and do that was also a really, really bad feature. A really grindy and boring for all those ores and whatnots. So, the replacement for the Mako was also really bad. <laughs> also, w when you flew between the systems and then there's... Uh, randomly there's uh, one of the Reapers there. That you just have to fly away or you die instantly. It was such a bullshit mechanic. Just that it really adds nothing to the game. Hello, here's an instant death. Okay. That you need, just need to fly away. Still haven't finished Mass Effect 3, despite this being one of your favorite game series. Yeah, it it, it is very nice. I, I like the story and all that, but it, it could have been better. You just need to trudge to, through the shitty gameplay to see the story. I didn't even mind uh, the ending, actually, CRC. I actually liked the ending. It wasn't too bad. Although I did play the game after they made the ending a bit better.
Let's see about the hope down skin. <laughs> yeah. Mako doesn't care about physics. You would have preferred the indoctrination story? It worked better, yeah. I didn't really mind uh, the story in any way, it was uh, good enough. I mean, it's still much better than most games. Only thing really people can complain about the story of Mass Effect is that it could have been better, but it's already really good compared to uh, almost all of other games, game series definitely. The, def the ending definitely felt uh, very rushed and could have been so much better. They should have introduced uh, some of the stuff uh, that was in the ending much earlier and build on that. And not just the uh, last 10 minutes of the game. Something. Hello, there's this thing. Oh, wh why didn't we never hear about this before? Yeah, even after they retooled uh, the ending, it felt uh, rushed. <laughs> oh, I like that. Half oh, Duskin. That is really cool. Did you see the picture about uh, Anno, uh, Half Duskin? Or do you even care about Anno? This one, uh, Half Dunskin, uh, not Half Dunskin, uh, Night Basilisk linked this uh, picture uh, today. That looks really, really nice. That's the new unknown coming up. Uh, uh, November. And that's just the. Uh, Earth part, you get to the moon as well. At times, I wish Bioware was spent more time on making more real content on the actual game and less figuring cringeworthy side stories centered around getting you. In <laughs> yes, yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly, Flame Razor. Especially because uh, those side stories are always pretty worthless and, like you said, extremely grinch-worthy. Oh. Hmm. I can't watch that during a stream. Ah, okay, good. Dragon Age Origin was awesome, then Dragon Age 2 was shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I actually have have to admit that I didn't like uh, Origins that much. Although that's very very likely uh, because uh, I played the game long after the release, so it felt uh, kind of dated. And kind of meh for me. If I had played it uh, when it was released first, I probably would have liked it much more. I saw Tusk. Escape pod and oh, mechanoids. Three snipers and escape pod. Decker. Well, Decker, you are probably not gonna survive.
In Origins we had a pre-planned combat that allowed for tactile thinking. Here's the sequel where we removed all tactile thinking with enemies randomly spawning on top of you with zero explanation as to why. Oh, and here's uh, button smash combat to boot. Ugh. Yes. I'm gonna lose so many turrets on this. And this is why I fucking hate uh, snipers in this game. Because uh, they obsolete uh, turrets immediately. They just cannot shoot there. And they will just uh, kill everything uh, from the range. Hey, Helvin Rush. If I didn't have these uh, sniper rifles, there would be no way to fight these side turrets. Other than die, pretty much. Such annoying bullshit. Even with this entrance of mine, they still go sniping all the turrets. I don't have any friendlies to call. Something. No one will help me. Well, actually, yeah, no, no one gives shit about me. It's it's enemies like these that just force you for force you into the kill box, defending. It's really a flowing game, flowing in the game design. Just dumb as shit. I, I have snipers. I, I'm shooting them with snipers from here. But meanwhile, they're gonna destroy all my turrets. And then they're gonna kill my guys. Because my snipers can't hit shit, it seems. Yeah, it works uh, in that case, CRT, because they are not actively attacking you. Because you can sh uh, shoot them from the range and they don't care, they will just stand there. These guys uh, that actually attack your base, they will run to attack you. Yeah, exactly, Flame Razor. These are just dumb. One of the worst parts of the game. This and uh, any any sniper in the game. Snipers are bullshit. They break the game. They make it dumb. Also, there's like no way to fight these. Uh, good in. If you go to melee, they will just murder you in seconds. Because they have insane melee attacks. <laughs> Nobody expects the boar distraction. Yeah, the boar died in two hits. EMP grenades? Yeah, good luck running close enough to throw a EMP grenade CRC without dying. Also, they become immune to the EMPs after a couple grenades.
And your kill box works, Sandam, because it's made uh, just to abuse the AI. Because that's the only way to properly fight these stupid enemies. Now they are shooting me, so I'm gonna die. There you go, headshot. Immediately. Just get inside the building? Yeah, w and do what? Just go die inside, that's fine. While they break all my shit. And there you go. Get hit. Let them in say they can come into close range to do what? So they destroy the rest of my turrets as well. And then I try to melee them in the close range. And shotgun. What shotgun? I have sniped two snipers. And I'm I'm sniping them already. And that's uh the best option we have. There goes your right radius. Yeah, this is a uh, game over. There goes your kidney. Yeah, I'm in a cover and they just uh, hit me all the time. Every playthrough. They're just in. They're like tin men from XCOM. Someone dies. Uh, no, uh, I, I can recruit a new guy. Uh, well, there goes Jacob. There's not gonna be anyone to recruit anyone. Uh, because uh, this uh, one guy is gonna kill all, all three of my guys. Unless Judavidan happens to kill him magically now. Ah, sorry, Chopin. Probably not gonna happen though. He's bleeding, tired, and a terrible mood. He goes insane in a second, and then that's it. Sandam is already dying. Epic gunfight. <laughs> if he goes insane tears, he, uh, he calms down after a while, so he would survive. Yeah, yeah, stick a go. 
And there goes Chopin. That's it. Yeah, yeah, Muddy. Pirate Merchant. And Sundam is broken. And dead. You're bleeding uh, severely. The thing is, uh, I've been able to defend this base against all other enemy attacks except uh, Scytheras. It's the same in the Glacier uh, playthrough as well. Scytheras are just broken. They always shoot at the, at the longest range, they don't take cover or anything, which means they will never wander in close enough for the turrets and all that. Bye bye. It's nice knowing you. <laughs> and fuck this wooden wall, particularly. <laughs> For some reason, he really wanted to kill that piece of wall. Good thing is uh, Sandam cannot fix his own bleeding because uh, game doesn't allow you to uh, patch yourself. Oh, I'm bleeding. Well, I don't know what to do with this bleeding arm. I'm just gonna stare it for a while. And fuck this spaceship as well. <laughs> Good job. I didn't know those exploded actually. Well, there goes my spaceship. It's burning down. And Sundam cannot save himself, so. There goes my AI core. Now that now you know how to deal with Scyther. <laughs> yeah, set up a explosive trap for them. At least you didn't die to Max. I think it counts as dying to the Max, uh Joy Punk. And there we go. Everyone dead. You beat those bastards? Yeah, I guess so. By exploding into their face. So yeah, mechanoids bullshit. They need to be changed. They they just break the game. They they force player into certain kind of things that they shouldn't. Two the two the times uh, the mechanoids have killed me. In the same way. Because I can't be arse and forced to into making a bullshit kill boxes. Because I don't think that's good for the game gameplay at all. So the mechanics really need to be changed. Maybe I'll just uh, edit the fucking uh, charge lenses out of the scythers next time I play the game. There's no point playing playing the game this way. Just just like make a scythers into epic melee enemies or something. Just get rid of all the snipers in the game. They definitely make the game dumb. I think I'm gonna be done for the day. I, I think it, it's too late to start anything new. And I'm gonna be doing goading with Dalsador tomorrow, so I need to wake up early anyways and go to sleep early. So I'll see you guys with uh, uh, prison.